Very interesting paper I came across uh, in RBM Online of 2023 recently. And this is a very short study of just four cases wherein they have given letrozole uh, after giving long term GNRH agonist in patients of adenomyosis and they noticed an improvement in pregnancy rate. Uh, let, let's, let's go through uh, three, four slides of this particular paper. This has been published by Mauro Corzillo and uh, from uh, IVI, I think this has come from Yale School of Medicine, been published. Uh, the pathophysiology of adenomyosis is all about tissue injury and repair at the endomyomatal junction, and that causes uh, the myohyperplasia, also associated with endometrium deposits into the myometrium, which may appear in various phases. And as we understand that adenomyosis can uh, give a very ultrasound picture of either a diffuse adenomyosis, there is thickness of the myometrium, I make it a point to measure the myometrial thickness in all the patients, plus there could be ecogenic changes in the form of myometrial cysts or a sundry pattern or radiating pattern, there could be disturbances in the junctional zone, there could be focal adenomyomas and etc. all those combinations you get. And we many times get your adenomyosis and endometrioma or endometriosis uh, going hand in hand. Uh, all these endometrial deposits have an excess amount of aromatase and some more estradiol and also there is a defective inactivation of estradiol to estrone. So estradiol preponderant tissues are there and progesterone receptor also decreases and hence or there is an isoform different of progesterone receptor and hence there is a progesterone resistance that means a very high dose of progesterone would be needed. And we find adenomyosis to be pretty common in our community, isn't it? In the urban India, most of the women are trying for pregnancy at a later age. And as you're trying for pregnancy beyond 30, 32 years, obviously the chance of you having adenomyosis is high. And surgical corrections are difficult. Uh, not everybody is suitable for a surgical correction. And they're pretty risky because uh, the recurrence is high. And again, you could injure the endometrium much, uh, much worse. So commonly, uh, giving GNRH agonists uh, for long term or uh, aromatase inhibitor for letrozole long term has been practiced and plenty of trials are established onto that and uh, giving progesterone alone may not be adequate. Uh, you also understand that when we give progesterone alone like dianogest really takes a real long time. A lot of patients do not respond. A few of them may require a higher doses of progesterone. So this particular study had just four patients wherein they had given more than three agonist injections and then they were failed to achieve pregnancies after embryo transfers. So before planning the next embryo transfer, they gave about two GNRH agonists and then they gave about 21 days of letrozole 2.5 mg once a day uh, for all these women and then they did the next embryo transfer. And look at this uh, case, just four cases, uh, look at the in the upper graph, just look at the estradiol levels at the end of two to four months of GNRH agonist. We expect an estradiol level going very low, very hypoestrogenic, maybe less than 20 picograms or less than 30. Everybody is between 50 to 130 picograms. So estrogen does maintain in some of the patients a little higher. And this could be produced by an excess aromatase activity in the utopic endometrium. Uh, and look at the pregnancy rate. The moment they added letrozole, they transfer embryos, blastocyst only one, but everybody achieved progesterone and the estrogen levels did go drastically down. So what they did was in the next cycle, besides GNRH agonists, they also used 21 days of letrozole and they put it that the peripheral aromatase activity is kept low, the estrogen production goes down and that in turn improves the endometrium better. Uh, so GNRH agonist alone fails to block the estrogen secretion from adenomyosis deposits. Menses, suppose you have menses after three injection, that means she's not been down regulated adequately. Uh, or the E2 levels keep beyond 60 picograms. Or if when you do a Doppler, blood flow is still seen in the adenomyotic deposits after your three depot injections are over. Uh, these are the indications that well, there is a peripheral estrogen there which is not helping us out. So with increased estrogen and a decreased progesterone, action, both these will maintain more inflamed endometrium. If significant reduction in USG finding of adenomyosis are not seen, it's worth adding a letrozole. And this is very, very important, I feel. You know, people keep asking and discussing how many times, how many injections of GNRH agonist you should be giving in patients of adenomyosis. I say, okay, go, go, you can go up to four injections of Zoladex because you want the adenomyotic changes, which made you diagnose that this patient adenomyosis to revert back and moment it reverts back, then is the right time to do an embryo transfer. So it's just promising a client that I will give you one and then do an embryo transfer just for economically driven decision. That's not correct. 
all this counseling has to go much prior. Again, a subgroup of that, as I mentioned in the earlier slide, that will maintain a estrogen a little higher or the eco, eco texture of the myometrium will not change or they will still have menses or they may have a triple line endometrium at the end of three deposits and they are the ones who will require letrozole additionally. Uh, high BMI women uh, again they will have a high estradiol production which comes from the periphery obesity um, the androstenedione in the obese cells gets converted to estrone uh, but large obese cells are there so the amount of estrone is high and that also keeps the adenomyces thriving so there is a vis a vis competition between the agonist and the peripheral estrogen and hence adding letrozole will also stop this peripheral estrogen production and that would help them further as well. It is a very interesting paper I feel of a wider use of letrozole in patients of adenomyces to down regulate the adenomyces better and improve the pregnancy rate. Though the study is small I think it is a very important take home for 